the second time I met O.J. Simpson. It was right after the trial of the century. There I was, now a young man of probably 23. O.J. Simpson was the most famous or infamous face on planet Earth. I was in a restaurant in Beverly Hills with my agents. I wasn't alone in the restaurant, but I was alone. I was the only black person in the restaurant. <laughs> and in the 90s, that felt very uncomfortable. Now I tend to enjoy it at this age. <laughs> I was having dinner with my agents, celebrating a deal that they told me was lucrative, but I later learned fucking sucked. <laughs> and suddenly, a group of women walked by. Every race was in that group. Black, white, Asian, Latina, white, white, and white again. They were all gorgeous. I watched them walk by. Then I saw a familiar face, Al Collins, the man from the infamous Bronco check towards the door. Couldn't believe what I saw. And then close behind him was O.J. Simpson, newly released from jail. The restaurant fell still. I was shocked. I didn't mean to say it out loud, but it just came out. <gasps> OJ! <laughs> he stopped. Turned around to see who said it. Saw my black face and correctly assumed it was me. <laughs> I was sitting in the corner of the booth. He leaned over all the white people I was having dinner with and shook my hand. How are you, young man? He looked in my eyes and I could see in his eyes that he didn't remember meeting me the first time. <laughs> and then he walked away. And I looked back at my agents, and all of them had nothing short of disgust on their faces. And the only one with the courage to voice their disgust was a woman named Sharon, who used to represent me. How could you, she said. How could you shake hands with that murderer? I said, Sharon, with all due respect, that murderer ran for over 11,000 yards. <laughs> and he loved it and fit. Love didn't fit. Get over yourself. <laughs> Some people can't do that. Some people just can't, they can't get over themselves. Gay people have a hard time doing that recently. Here we go, here comes the deep water. <laughs> no, recently I've noticed that. I noticed that uh, with that Manny Pacquiao controversy. Yeah, no, it was now, now in the gay community's defense, uh, Manny Pacquiao said some outlandish shit about gay people. Very, very not nice things that I won't repeat, but there was biblical verses and <laughs> Some analogies to animals. Wasn't a good look. Nike took his shoes immediately. <laughs> which I thought was a little harsh. A little harsh. You know what I mean? Because he's, uh, just because he's Asian. You know what I mean? The fuck you gonna take shoes off Asian dude to appease a gay dude. You know what I mean? No, you don't know what I mean. But Asian people kind of know what I mean. No? No Asians in the front? No? No, this is what I mean. Okay, look, okay, you're an Asian dude. No, I, don't, I say this with no disrespect, but we're all Americans, right? And we can agree that America has a huge body count all over the world, but nowhere more than Asia. Literally, if you look at history, recently, we have bombed the masculinity out of an entire continent. We dropped two atomic bombs on fucking Japan, and they've been drawing Hello Kitty and shit ever since. <laughs> There's a lot of lady boys in the wake of our bombs. And I know these things because my wife is Asian. She's Filipino. All right, well, okay, so that explains it. Now you know why you see me at all those Filipino events. I'm not there picking up pussy, I'm dropping some off. I take my wife to all that shit. I took my wife to see Pacquiao fight Mayweather. We sat ringside, okay? That, yeah, that was a quiet car ride home. That's what that was. 
But if you know what's popping in the Philippines, you know that they got a whole generation of kids in the Philippines growing up without their mothers. Yes, a lot of women in the Philippines go to the Arabian Peninsula, they come to the United back home, which is still one of the number one staples in the Philippines economy, money that their expats send back to the Philippines. The men, on the other hand, are left rearing children, twiddling their thumbs, waiting on their wives' checks. These men have been fucking emasculated. And then suddenly, a boxer rises from amongst them and reinstates their manhood with his motherfucking fist. This is not the guy you're supposed to ask, what do you think of homosexuals? <laughs> He's not your champ. That's why I don't have a sneaker deal, because if you say something that people don't like, they'll take your fucking shoes off. I throw the hat. <laughs> They've got the longest mental gap to bridge. That's all I'm saying. Because, you know, whenever I see one of them T's on the street, I don't mind them, but I'll be like, man, I miss Bruce. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm 42. I remember Bruce Jenner. Before the Kardashians, before all that, this motherfucker was a white American superhero. It was amazing. He was beating Africans at track and field. We'd never seen anything like it. He was on my cereal box growing up. You know how much of that cereal I ate? Nigga, I didn't know he was gonna do that. I knew before you guys knew. I heard things on the street in Hollywood. You know, you just be out, see people. Hey, what's up, Kanye? Why the long face? <laughs> Nigga, you'll see. I got two mother-in-laws now. <laughs> and when I heard he was gonna do it, I was scared. I didn't think the public was ready. I didn't think the media was ready. And you know what? I was wrong. Never seen anything like it. Welcome to the world, Caitlin. So long, Bruce. Hello, somebody called me a nigga in traffic last Wednesday. It's, it's a long, it takes, it takes a minute. My wife's friend, Stuart, told me that. My wife has a lot of gay friends. Stuart, Stuart's their leader. She has a lot of gay friends. And I don't like them. Not because they're gay, I'm just judging them on the merits of their character. They're just not nice dudes. They're fucking rude house guests. They're sitting on my couch, giggling with my wife, eating my motherfucking macaroons. And I come in, they act like the party's over. Hey, Stuart, what's going on? This guy talks to me the way a cat would speak if a cat could talk. Hi, David. <laughs> Stuart, what's all the beef, man? What's going on? He always must have had some kind of gay political argument. The last one was about a, a petition in federal court to take the words husband and wife out of the law. I said, well, why would you want those words out the law? He said, because it discriminates against same-sex couples. I was like, niggas, please save me the semantics. Just trust me, take your chips and get the fuck out of the casino. You're about to side, talk that over amongst yourselves, and whichever one of you is gayer, that's the wife. No, 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 Stuart didn't like that. Stuart educates me about this movement, you know what I mean? I didn't even know shit about it. He told me it's called L-B-G-T-Q. I was like, what the fuck is the Q? Does that even make sense, Q? Turns out Q is like the vowels. That shit is sometimes why. It's for gay dudes that don't really know they're gay. You know what I mean? Like prison fags are like, well, I'm not gay, nigga. I'm just sucking these dicks to pass the time. <laughs> I'm not G, I'm Q. <laughs> I think, I think, okay, again, of all those letters, the T has the toughest road ahead. In fact, I think the T should stand for tough. If Martin Luther King had a sneaker deal, we'd still be on the back of the bus.
They always true. The Nike exec come up. Hi, Martin. Uh, we need you to tone down the talk of civil rights and uh, blacks being humans. It's it's upsetting our southern distributors. But I don't understand. I thought that's why I had a sneaker deal in the first place. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, really, it's a walking shoe, and we like the marching, but uh, try to understand. Fuck that shit. You know, I get it, though. I understand why gay people are mad, and I, I empathize. You know what? And, I'm just telling you this is a black dude. I support your movement. But if you want to take some advice from a Negro, pace yourself. <laughs> These things take a while. Just because they passed the law doesn't mean they're going to like it. Because Brown versus the Board of Education was in 1955. I was shocked. Is this happening? Wait a minute. Is this a time in American history when an American can make a decision for themselves? And even though other Americans don't understand it, they'll support it? and let this person live a happy life? Is this what's happening? If it is, then good for America. That's Dave Chappelle, the American. <laughs> Although Dave Chappelle, the black American, <laughs> he was a little jealous. I was like, how the fuck are transgender people beating black people in the Discrimination Olympics? <laughs> If the police shot half as many transgenders as they did niggas last year, it'd be a fucking war in L.A. I know black dudes in Brooklyn, hard street motherfuckers, that wear high heels just to feel safe. <laughs> Transgenders are gangsters. I used to do business with a transgender in Hollywood. Man, everybody would be scared of her in the boardroom. She walk in there, newly minted woman, high heels, purse. <laughs> yeah. And then she walked to the head of the conference table, stare at us all, reaching a person, pull her old dick out and throw it on the table. <laughs> Let's talk business, gentlemen. Shit ah! is scary as fuck. If your best friend pitched that to you, you'd be horrified. Yo, nigga, let's go to the hospital and cut our dicks off and make pussies out of them shits. What? Can't we just get matching jackets or tattoos or something? Sure, that's what you want to do. It's only one way to find out, nigga. Woo, tang, bow, bow. Let's go to the club and trick niggas into fucking us. Yeah. <laughs>